signs and wonders. Absolute grace. Complete freedom. A place of no condemnation. Zoe Ministries, where we dare to believe. You guys ready for tonight? All of you, praise God, hallelujah. Well, I'm just going to do a quick recap, quickly for us. I'm not going to go into much detail. But we're busy with a series called Revelation. And we did a bit of a recap, you know, just an intro and also part two. You know, if you actually get part two, you don't have to worry about the rest. But part one was just basically about, you know what, um, you know, many Christians don't want to read the book of Revelation because it scares them. They don't understand what's going on. You know, it, actually there's a lot of false doctrine concerning the book of Revelation. Uh, it scares the people. And I always say to people, the book of Revelation is actually a beautiful book. It's actually a revealing of Jesus Christ. It's not about the beast. It's not about the Antichrist. It's not about doom and gloom. You know, it's about a revealing of something, of something that's, uh, that's past, present, and also uh, future happenings, okay? So I explain that to people as well. It's funny, many people uh, have written a lot of books, Hal Lindsey and all of these other people. Um, I'm not saying they, they're bad people, but their word is just wrong, um, you know? So a lot of the stuff that they wrote about the, the, the end times, uh, you know, use the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel. Um, if you do a search on all of these people, Hal Lindsey, Jack Van Imp, you know, Tim LaHaye, you see a lot of the stuff that they actually prophesied never came to pass. And they just keep on writing books, writing books, the left behind series, making millions, and the people are falling it, falling by it, you know. So we're going to get into some details as well, later stage, concerning all of these things. You know, um, what else did I say in part one? But I was, I was just talking in just in, in, in the basic context that if you read the book of Revelation or people going to the end times, it's like the devil has won, you know, uh, and I cannot, I, I cannot believe that, you know. It sounds like the whole world is going to hell and that's about it, you know. So there's no victory for us, you know. So that doesn't make sense to me at all. So yes, um, part two basically was interesting as well. If you look at part one, you know, we basically, if you read from, from, um, from Revelation, uh, if you go in the book of Revelation, we already automatically see that it says Revelation, not Revelations. So it means singular, and it also talks about First of all, the book of Revelation, um, it's about Jesus. So it's all about Jesus. You guys can read it. The book of Revelation, it means a revelation of Jesus. Not the beast, not the anchor. It's about Jesus. We went through the first bit, and we see, if you see it, it actually means there, it says, shortly. Okay? It talks about the time will come. It's very near. And we also saw as well, later stage as well, that John was referring to the seven church churches. So he was very specific. God is very specific in all of these things that he, that he does and what he says as well. Okay? So we actually looked at this, and, you know, it says away, and it also talks, it has made us kings and priests unto the Most High God. It's not going to. It means that it's already been done already. And it also talks the timeline as well, what's very important that we need to understand. Paul, um, because people say, now that the, the, uh, John wrote it in other Patmos, um, you know, um, and we actually saw that he was, it says in verse uh, 9, it says, both my brother companion in the tribulation, so he was part of the tribulation. We already saw that. We also saw in he, uh, Revelation that the temple was not destroyed yet. So it was all pre, before the fall of Jerusalem. People say, no, he wrote it after. No, it was actually just before it. We saw the timeline as well. In other words, it was, uh, we saw John was, was in the tribulation. Tribulation. Okay. Excuse my handwriting, but you'll get the gist of it. Okay. So we looked at all of this stuff. We also saw the seven, we'll just give you a bit of insight. The seven, the Romans was at that stage known 
as the seven heads and seven whatever is actually the city on the seven hills. We actually saw all of the stuff. We got into detail on all of these things. And Nero Kaiser was the last emperor and all of the stuff. We saw all of this. The word takos um, uh, referred to close at hand. All of these things is very specific. Okay, so we went that to part two and get, this, get that. But tonight what we're going to do is we're going to go and start un- going to a bit of depth. Because as we see now part three, you go and you see, you start reading the book of Revelation, and then it goes to chapter two, chapter, talking again to the churches, referring again to the churches, referring again to the churches. Then you go to chapter five, and it starts talking about, oh, there's a seal. Who can open the seal? What seal? All of these things, you know, the seal. And they talk about the seals. And because and people are very scared talking about the seals, okay? So... So we're going to look, what is the seals? Or the seven seals, okay? Not the (coughs) seals, but the seal, okay? (laughs) Because you go through it and who will open this, whatever, who is worthy to open the seal, who is worthy to do all the stuff. Because we look at this stuff and again, now we start looking at it, but this seal, what's going to be broken, the seven seals, talks about plagues, it talks about all of this stuff. So you can go to Revelation 6, and we're going to go through some of the stuff. But you need to understand the reason. I'm already jumping the gun for you. I want to explain to you that that seven seals and all of this stuff was broken, and all of these things was referring to Jerusalem, was referring to the harlot. Was Who was that harlot? Yes, it was Jerusalem, you know. But you need to understand all of this stuff. The book of Revelation is actually is very symbolic. But it's also, it is Old Testament related. Because if you read Ezekiel and Jeremiah and Isaiah, it's very symbolic stuff that they use. Okay? So that's why it confuses the people. So you need to know the Old Testament to actually understand the book of Revelation. Okay? So I want you to, the emphasis uh, is on that. I'm not going to go to every single seal, everything or whatever, but I want you to see the just of stuff. Okay? To get all of this stuff. Again, I'm not saying I'm a teacher of teachers. I'm a scholar of scholars. But I want you to understand the gist of stuff concerning the book of Revelation. Okay. I want you to see that. It's also talking about judgment. All of these things. You know, 27 times in the book of Revelation talks about this land that was slain. Slain. Talks about the judgment, the throne, whatever. It is a book of judgment. Yes. But for who? We're going to get that to understand it. Because you see, now we'll judge you with this, and this is going to fall upon you, and that's going to happen to you, whatever. It's a lot of judgment, and that scares the people, because you think it's you being judged. And it's going to be judgment. And we're going to be destroyed. And God's going to hit the, the planet with plagues. And stars are going to fall, and things are going to happen. So you're like, I don't want to read that, because now I'm going to judge, and I'm going to be destroyed, and I'm going to be... So we're going to go through some of this stuff. So you can, I can't get into too much detail. I'll also be here forever and a day. But I'm just going to go through some stuff. Okay. Okay. So if you read the book of Revelation, from verse, Revelation 6 from verse 1. It says, Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. Okay, now talking about the seals. The Lamb, which is Christ, which is God. And I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice, The thunder, come and see. And I look and behold, the white horse, so you who sat on the... Uh, on it and bow down and a crown was given to him and he went out conquering uh, uh, and the conqueror when he opened the second seal i heard the second living creature saying come i see another horse fiercely red red and went out and it was granted to one who sat on it to take peace from the earth and that and you know also another thing is when they talk about earth it talks that word is actually land in the Greek, it's not earth, as the whole earth, the whole thing. It actually means the land. The land. I want you to understand that. And that people should kill one another, and there was a given to him a great sword. And when he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and the horse sat on, had a pillar of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quarter of wheat for a denarius, and three quarters of barnes. For the denarius and do not harm the oil or and the wine. Now I want you to understand this. Now a lot of the writings you'll read, if you can get Josephus's writings, you'll start understanding that 
of course, remember, the, sorry, I want to go back a little bit. Remember I said to you, in the first book of Revelation, it talks about the seven spirits and so lampstand, referring to the churches and stuff. So it gives you already a clue how to read the book of Revelation, and it interprets itself as well. But you need to go back to the Old Testament as well, and also historically go back and see what it actually meant. There already you start seeing talks about there's going to be a problem buying and selling, there's going to be a problem, you know, Stuff is going to be expensive or cheap or whatever. So it really refers to what's happening in that time already, what's going to happen. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the four living creatures saying, Come and see. So I looked and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on was death, and Hades followed with him, and power was given to him over, the, the, uh, um, over a fourth of the earth, to kill with swords and hunger, with death and by the beast of, beast of the earth. In other words, again, now, it's very hectic stuff. And we always see the world. It's the, everything's still about to happen. But read further. When he opened the first seal, I saw on the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And you start seeing different picture here more and more. And they cried out with a loud voice saying, How long? Now it gives you an, a reference concerning a time frame. Do you see that? Because they're asking them, but Lord, how long? And holy and true until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth. And again, it talks about the land. Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer. Do you see, it talks about it's not going to happen. It says, wait, because remember, it's in the tribulation. It says, a little while longer. Wait. It's a little while longer. Until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was complete. So in other words, the tribulation was not finished yet. There's still things that need to, but a little while longer. Not Whatever. You know, because let me explain to you. A lot of people say this. And, and Peter talks about a thousand, a, th a day is a thousand years, a thousand years a day. But in the whole passage of that, in, in, in Peter, it talks about, so how long must we wait? Because from your forefathers, you said it must be wait. So you must look at the whole reference concerning, but it can be only, uh, it's a day. It's a, you know, there's, there's a reference concerning time. It's concerning time. Always a, a time reference. Look at the time reference. How does it spell? How is it going to be? But it's going to be a thousand years. Still wait. No, no, no. It talks about, how does he refer to the time? Now. A little while. The Greek word, taikos, near at hand. A little while. All of the stuff. It says, I look when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black and sat off, and here on the moon it became like blood. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth. Now let's be real. If the stars of the heaven, not a star, should hit the earth. Sayonara. <laughs> you see, it's very some symbolic stuff that comes out here concerning nations, concerning things, concerning whatever. We'll get to that as well. I want you to just see this stuff. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth. The stars of heaven. You've got to be kidding me. It's talking about the fall of who? You look. Remember what, what did Abraham, what did God say to when he looked out and says, the stars, will, this will be your descendants like the stars. And we are Abraham's children, but they fell. Who fell? Israel. Fell. The stars fell. The things fell. Jerusalem fell. You know, they fell. No, because it, it makes sense to you to see, remember Joseph as well? Joseph. And you saw the sun and the moon bowing down to him, which was it, his parents and all of the things. You see the symbolism in all of this stuff. I want you to get this stuff. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And let's be real. Every mountain should be moved out of its place. You know, or going to be out. If this is even a future event, we will be, <laughs> again, bye-bye, Marai. 
But first of all, the stars and moon fell. No more earth. Now how will the moon, now how will the mountains be moved? I want you to just see practically here. And it says here, now verse 15, I want you to hear this now. And the kings of the earth and the great men, the rich men, the common the commanders and the mighty men, every slave and every free man, hid themselves in the caves in the rocks of the mountain. Now that almost sounds like Matthew 24. And say to the mountains and to the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the land. In other words, this judgment. When you say it's a throne or cloud coming, it means judgment. For the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand. Okay. So there's seven things happening in the book of the seven seals. There's judgment. There's things happening. Talks about stars, which is referring to Israel to the Jews, to Jerusalem. It's referring to all of that stuff. I said, but Johan, why? I said, that doesn't make sense to me. Then you go to Leviticus. If you want to go to Leviticus, I'm not going to just go to Leviticus 26. Levitic, Leviticus 26. You can go through the whole thing, but I'm just giving you a couple of references here. Verse 18 talks about this. It says, And after all this, if you do not obey me, then I will punish you with seven times more for your sins. Seven times. Verse 21. Then if you walk contrary to me and, and are not willing to obey me, I will bring on you seven times more plagues according to your sins. Remember the seven seals is plagues, the seven things happening, all of those things happening. It's already referring to some interesting stuff. And then verse 24. Then I also will walk contrary to you and I will punish you yet seven times for your sins. And then verse 28. Then I also will walk contrary to you in fury and I, and I even I will chastise you seven times for your sins. So again, seven times, seven times, seven times. Why is it seven seals? But Johann, it still doesn't make sense to me. Don't worry, it will get clear to you just now. Okay. You must understand, you need to understand the part of, because Bob, what I'm getting to is the harlot thing. The harlot thing and the harlot thing and whatever. And we always look now, Jerusalem is so pretty and they don't have nothing wrong and, and God's going to judge Jerusalem and God's going to, uh, 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 going to uh, sorry, vindicate Jerusalem and, you know, all of these things and he's going to set himself on the mount and he's, he's going to reign with his people. No, no, that's old stuff Jewish thinking. That they were also thinking that, you know what, um, God's going to set himself up and he, uh, in Jerusalem he's going to slay all, you know, Jerusalem's or the Jewish um, uh, enemies. That's not the truth. That's not the truth. And we're going to look at that now as well. Because we're going to look at the Jerusalem, we're going to look at this, who is the harlot in Revelation? Who did he refer to in all of this stuff? You know, because it talks a lot about the harlot. You have heard about the harlot and, and all of these things. Now if we, read, if we go to Revelation 17, it's there at the back, okay. Revelation 17, verse 3. So she carried me away, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names, blaspheming, having seven heads and, and ten horns. Okay? Verse 5 and 6. Okay, so let's go to verse 4. I'll jump the gun. The woman was arrayed in purple scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a gold cup full of abomination and a filthiness and a fornication. Now already if you look at this, the, all, the priest in that stage had the purple, had the robe, had all of these things. It referred to Old Testament stuff. It's a reference to all of these things already. And it says here, on her, on her forehead a name was written. Mystery Babylon of the great, the mother of the harlot, of the abomination of the earth or the land. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Oh, 
who is he referring to now suddenly? Now suddenly it becomes more clear here. Of the martyr of Jesus, and, and when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. Already, if you know what Jesus referred to, we'll get into that just now. Revelation 14, verse 8. I'm just going quickly through it so you can get an idea. Revelation 14, verse 8. And another, an, an, and another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen. It is fallen, that great, I want you to hear the word, great city. Great city. Because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. I want you to hear great city. Revelation 11 verse 8. Revelation 11 verse 8. Hear what it says here. And their dead bodies will lie in the streets of the great city which spiritually called Sodom and Egypt where also our Lord was crucified. Now, already it starts telling you this Babylon, this harlot thing, okay, is referring to Jerusalem. Where was Christ? He was by Jerusalem outside the city. So it really gives you understanding the seven seals, the plague, the judgment that's coming was upon the nation of Israel. It's coming with the judgment of all of these things upon, not on the earth, not on the earth. But Johan, that still doesn't make sense to me. I hear what you're saying, but wait, there is more. I will tell you now. Okay? Because we need to understand we are in Revelation 6. Who is this harlot? Who, who is this seals? Who is this, who is all this judgment coming upon? Because when you read the book of Revelation, it's judgment for the whole world, isn't it? And the whole world will be destroyed. And there's going to be this going to happen. It's not the truth. Josephus, if you run Josephus War, this is if you want, it's a historian. This guy is a renowned historian. Okay, you can go and read up some of his stuff. Very well renowned. He says this. He says, It was a Babylonian curtain embroidered with blue and fine linen, a scarlet and purple, and in and in contexture that was truly wonderful. He even saw that the Babylonian thing, he saw that in Jerusalem when the when Jerusalem was falling or whatever, he saw that as well. You saw, Josephus saw, you also see a lot of stuff that you wrote was very um, historical concerning what happened to Jerusalem, the fall of Jerusalem, the hailstones that fell, that came and all of these things, was actually the catapults, all of these things you can read of the things of Josephus and also the fall of Babylon as well. You see Isaiah 1 verse 2. Isaiah 1 verse 2 talks also about Jerusalem, talks about Israel. Isaiah 1 verse 2, it says here, how is, the, how is the faithful city become a harlot? It talks about that. That this city, this faithful city, which was his city, became a harlot. Talks about Jerusalem. Talks about the city. Okay. Then as well, we, then we're going to go into what Jesus said. The great harlot. Let's go and see what Jesus says. You don't have to believe me. Let's hear what Jesus says. Let's go to Matthew. It's the beginning of the New Testament. <laughs> I'm trying to cram in as much as possible in half an hour. Matthew. Okay. But I want you to first understand in Matthew. Remember it talks about the slaying, the, 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 all of these things, it talks about as well, how you killed the prophets, killed the people, whatever, and all of the stuff happening. I just want to give you a bit of insight, Matthew 23, from say verse 31. It says here, Therefore you are witness against yourself that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. He's talking to them. Full up there, then the measure of your fatherless guilt, serpents, brood of vipers, how can you escape the condemnation of hell? Therefore, indeed, I sent you prophets, wise men, and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify. 
and some of them you will scorch in your synagogues and persecute, persecute from city to city. You know synagogues? God never installed a synagogue. Do you know that? The synagogues come from a Babylonian system. And if you go in the book of Revelation, it talks about you have your synagogue, um, synagogue of Satan. Synagogues is not biblical. Even today, the synagogues they have, God never instituted synagogues, only the temple. Did you ever see in the Bible where God instituted this synagogue? Never. Did he institute the temple? Yes, he did. You see how all this false stuff came in to creep in as well. And it says here, that on you may come all the righteous bloodshed of the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah and the son of Bekai, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Should I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. Again, he refers to that generation. Again, the timeline again. Matthew 24, he also says, this generation. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. The one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I want to gather as your children together as hen gathered her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I say to you, shall see me no more till you say, Blessed to you comes into the name of the Lord. Already referred to Jerusalem. He really says, listen, you kill the prophets, you do all the stuff. I try to gather you all the stuff, but you don't want to listen. And he says, he's talking about the crucifixion. He's talking about, you're going to kill me. He talks about all the stuff. And even John says that, you know what, I came to his own, but his own did not receive him. His own didn't want him. The Jewish people didn't want him. He goes in as well. It says here, Matthew, Matthew uh, 24, 15. We'll go later stage. We're going to refer a lot to Matthew 24 in this next couple of times, uh, sessions as well. But Matthew 24 from verse 15. Therefore, when you see the abomination of the desolation spoken of by the book, uh, by the Daniel, the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads this, let him understand. Then let those who are in Jerusalem flee to the mountains. Do you know what it talks? Remember, it says, them, what did it say in Revelation 6? They will flee up and not go down to take anything out of the house and let him who is in the field not go back to, to get these clothes, but woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that you, your flight may not be in the winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be a great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world until the time no, nor even shall be. And it goes further on, and it goes again, Matthew 24, it goes further on, it says, and verse 34, it says, Should I say to you, this generation, will not pass away until all of these things happened. So again, the timeline is very specific. And again, God, Christ is very specific. Who was he referring to? Who is that city? Again, the seven seals, it says, you know, you rejected me and all of these things. Again, it says in, in Revelation 6, it talks about this generation. You killed the prophets. It says, and you will flee to the mountains. Again, who is he referring to? The uh, Jerusalem. The Jewish nation, he talks about that stuff. And there was judgment. How many times? 20 cents, the land was slain, land was slain. God on his throne, God on his throne. When you, have you ever seen a judge? You know, a judge is on the bench. He's judging. He's on the throne. He's judging. He's judging. The book of, was there to judge who? Not the world. The, he's bright. Oh, he's, um, he's, uh, um, he's Jerusalem. He's ex-wife. <laughs> you know? He's ex-wife. You know, because he's getting a new one now, which was us. Or he's got a new one. We'll get into that just now. We'll get into it now, just now. Revelation 21. I want you to see this as well. Revelation 21. Verse 9. Again, it says here, now it's the same angel again. It says here, then one of the seven angels, we had the seven bowls filled with the seven last place, came to me and, and took me up and saying, come, I will show you the bride's lamb's wife. 
In other words, God, God was referring, listen, I want, I want you to see my true bride. I want to see the real thing. Then, of course, Revelation 17 um, as well, verse 1, refers to the not-so-good one. It talks about the historical Jerusalem, not the new Jerusalem, not God's lamb's wife. Again, it says here in 7 verse 7, Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and, and talked with me, saying, Come see, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. Now we understood now who, who is referring to. So is the judgment and all of this stuff happening now to us, the people that saved, that's going to go through the tribulation, or is he judging the harlot? Is he going to judge what they did? Do you understand where he's going? What God is referring to? No, 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 I want you to show my, 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 my wife. I want to show you the lamb's wife. You know, the one that is true. And this is, no, 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 I'm going to show you the historical one. The one that was not so good. The harlot. Because they slaughtered the prophets. They did all the stuff. They even, I came to them, but they didn't want to receive me. All of the stuff is referring to that. I mean, you can read Galatians 4. It talks about the historical, historical um, Jerusalem and the new Jerusalem. Hebrews 12, same thing. It talks about now you come to the heavenly Jerusalem, uh, a mountain, and all of the stuff. Hebrews 12 talks about that. There's always, you know, the historical one and then the real one, you know, the spiritual one, what, what we are now today. We're not going to get that judgment. We're not going to get the seven bulls. We're not going to get all of the stuff. The world is not going to get it. They got it. It's very distinct between the two. Very, very distinct. Then uh, did I say Rev Revelation 11 verse 8. It talks about this, and I said that as well. It talks about that. And the children and their bodies will be in the streets, and the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, will also, where also our Lord was crucified. You see, it talks about the great city, which was Jerusalem. The bodies, all of the stuff talks about that because many of the people why might want you to hear this stuff how many times have you heard from the, the the end time stuff no that babylonian babylon is actually russia coming in it's actually you know god's going to judge this thing's going to happen and no 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 do you hear all the cities is going to come in and all of these things no 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 it's jerusalem it's been judged that great city now he's referring to babylon is being a harlot how many times did God divorce? He divorced them. How many times did He say to you, you play the harlot with me? Isaiah, Jeremiah. You backsliding people. Jeremiah 3, go and read it. Jeremiah 14. Jeremiah 31, verse 34. I mean, so many places. Talks about that. All, even Old Testament. Love God, then I go off and commit adultery with the Lord again. Then I repent and I come back again. And I'll take them back again like... You know, you, you defy yourself, but I will take you back again. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Do you see what happens in the book of Revelation? Are you, am I trying, are you starting to get the picture concerning the book of Revelation when it comes to that? I want you to get that. I mean, Jeremiah 3 verse 14 says, Return our backsliding children, says the Lord, for I'm married to you. I will take you and... Uh, uh, take you and one from a city and two from, from a family and I will bring you to Zion. So God married, had them married, but then he divorced. He divorced them. Verse, Jeremiah 31 verse 31, it says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant or new testament with the house of Israel and, uh, and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says Lord, though I was a husband to them. So God divorced them. And I didn't want them. And it goes further on, it says, verse 3, For no more shall every man teach, okay, it goes on, that talks about all the new things. Matthew 9, 7, 19, verse 7 talks about Moses giving a divorce, all of these things. Then another thing as well, but there's a true judgment that came upon Jerusalem, came upon the Jewish nation, 
Matthew 27. You go to Matthew 27. They spoke a curse upon themselves. Matthew 27. This is when Jesus was crucified. Just before he wanted to be crucified. What did the people say? Matthew 27 from verse 24. When Pilate saw that he could not prevail at all, but rather that a tumult was rising, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I'm innocent of the blood of this, of this just person you see, you see to it. So he says, I'm free. I'm washing my hands, but then you must see to it. And what did they say in the next verse? And all the people answered and said, His blood be upon us and our children. On us and our children. A generation there and then the next generation. Then he released Barabbas, means son of the father. Son of the father. To them, and when he had scorched Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. So automatically you see there's judgment coming. There was an intimate judgment that they didn't want to receive God. They didn't want to receive God's gift to the world, which was a son called Jesus Christ. You already see that in the book of Revelation. Yes, the sun and the moon, and you use very symbolic stuff, you know, happening with all of this stuff. But like I said to people, people go into, now the sun and moon is going to fall and it's going to hit, the stars is going to hit, stars is going to hit the earth. I'm like, seriously, dude. You must start looking at Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, all of this stuff, and see the symbolism of everything. And what is referring to jo um, Joseph, all of the stars, which was Israel. I will multiply you like the stars, you know. And then they fell to the ground. They fell to the earth. They fell to the ground, the Israelites, the Jewish people. They fell to the ground on the earth, on the land. Because people get too much into this harlot stuff. And this is, you know, the harlot's going to come. It's going to be a woman that's deceiving the nations. It's going to be this what's going to happen. And this is going to happen, which is all a lot of junk. Are you guys getting it tonight, what I'm seeing here? You see it more when you start reading it. I want you to just give you a bit of insight concerning how it is. That's already my thumbs up. So I try to get through all of this stuff as quick as possible. But read it now. We're going we're to go through the next stuff and next stuff. And later stage, we'll get to the mark of the beast. We'll get to the antichrist. We'll get to all of these things later stage. But we are now... Because chapter 1, explain 2, it talks about just the churches, the churches, the churches. So 5 talks about the seal, and then who is the seal? What's happening to the stuff? Chapter 6. And you'll see now how it actually, what was, what was John actually referring to? Who was John actually referring to when he saw the stuff? What was the angel referring to when Jason saw all this stuff? Do you get the stuff? Do you see it now? Is that okay? So don't be scared of revelation. Start embracing it. And see, it's not for you, it's judgment. The harlot was the great city. It was Jerusalem. It was all of the stuff. Amen. Hi, my name is Pastor Johan Mankies from Zoe Ministries, South Africa, here in Rudderport. I just want to say thank you for, for watching this message. And I really pray that God has touched you, He has encouraged you, He has uplifted you in Jesus' name. Also, I want to say to you, if you've never made Jesus your Lord, it is very simple. All that you say is, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and I believe and confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Very simple. Then you are saved. If you want more information about myself and about our ministry, please do not hesitate to visit our website and see what we're all about and what we have to offer. So I just want to say bless you again and thank you again for watching this awesome message. Amen. Bless you.